No better way than to sit at the master's table and dine with him, breaking bread in fellowship one with another through the precious what? Word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to use for a title this morning. If you're taking notes, you can write the title down. The Great Advocate. The Amen. Great Advocate. Amen. Now there's two references that identify the Advocate. One is the Lord Jesus Christ and His office rests where now? In heaven. But we have another Advocate. And the, and the Bible talks about Him. Jesus said, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't go away, the Advocate won't come. Who is this great Advocate? What is His purpose? And that's what I want to speak to you a little bit about today and take a few minutes talking about the great advocate. The great advocate is no other than the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is a doctrine that the church has to get correct, saints. Amen. Because there is a lot of churches that are having church but are not including the all-important person who is called the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is the third person the third member of the Holy Trinity, the Divine Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? amen. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now i got to share with you, church, the Holy Spirit is not some higher power. Amen? He's not some mystical vapor. He's not an it. He is a he. Amen. Amen. He is the third person of the Trinity, of the Godhead. And he has the distinct office. Three, each one has their distinct offices, but they are all one. Amen. It's as if you can say, well, me and Pastor Delisa, we're married, but we're two distinct people. But we become what? One flesh. And if you can see it that way, you can understand the Trinity a little better, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen? But I want to be able to teach you correctly how Jesus taught the church about the office of the Holy Spirit, about the great advocate, and what his purpose and role is here on the earth today. So I want you to turn with me to John, and we're going to take our scripture today in John chapter 14. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited to bring this word to you. Amen. Talking about the Holy Spirit today. We need the Holy Ghost every day, saints. John chapter 14. And before we, I give you the scripture, I want you to look up and listen to this just for a second before we read. And if you're taking notes, I want you to understand what the Greek word for advocate really means. The word advocate in the Greek translation means parakletos. I'll say it again. Parakletos. What that means is one called alongside to help. Or comforter. Intercessor. Encourager. And counselor. Those are the distinct names that refer all to the Holy Spirit and what He does. Now the reason I like the word advocate is because it encompasses all those words, encourager, comforter, intercessor, and counselor. He is our teacher. He is our encourager. He is our comforter. He is the one that leads us into all truth. But you've got to know that you're not left alone, saints. And I want to get into that a little bit this morning about what the role of the Holy Spirit is, this great advocate that we're talking about this morning. I want you to go with me to verse 15. John 14, chapter 14, verse 15. And this is Jesus speaking in red. He's talking to his disciples. And let's go ahead and read, saints. He says, if you love me, if you love me, obey my commandments. Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and close up and we'll just go yes, ahead and start amen. praying. <laughs> if you love me, he says, obey my commandments. 
Christ is already instructing them because he already senses in the disciples' hearts that they're becoming sorrowful, that they're starting to get discouraged. And because he's already predicted the crucifixion that he must face, he's already told the disciples, I have to go to the cross. I have to die. He's already predicted Judas Iscariot's betrayal. He's already predicted Peter denying him. He's already predicted all these things and now he comes to the exhortation upon his beloved children, his disciples. Amen. He's saying, look, these things got to happen, but the one thing I want you to focus on is obeying my commandments. Amen. If you truly say you love me, in the midst of everything that's going to come at you in these last days, saints, Amen. you must continue to obey what God has called you to obey. And he's telling the disciples, and he's saying, look, look, wait a minute. I'm telling you to obey my commandments, but I'm not going to leave you powerless. Mm. <laughs> Go to verse 16. He says, you're going to obey me, but I want to share something with you. He said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. The advocate, the helper, the comforter, the encourager, the counselor, Paracletos, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He says, I will give you another advocate. He goes, I'm not going to leave you. Look, saints, who will never leave you. Verse 17. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. Now, some people, some ministers, some churches will teach you. As we read here, Jesus said, I will pray to the Father and he will send you another advocate. He's going to send you, King James says, he's going to send what? The helper. Amen. To help you to be able to follow what I command you. Because he's sensing that the disciples are saying, we can't follow you. We don't have the strength. We don't have the indwelling presence. We don't have the power nor the will to serve you or obey you. And Jesus says, no problem. He already discerns the thoughts of his disciples and tells them not to worry. I'm going to pray to the Father that he shall send you the advocate and the Holy Spirit will never leave you. Amen. That means once the Holy Spirit has descended, which happened on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit was poured out upon all flesh and they were baptized in the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. That was the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost that Jesus Christ promised that he would do. And it came to pass. Amen. And now that the Holy Spirit dwells on the earth, he shall never be removed. He shall be here for eternity. Amen. Even after the rapture. Some ministries preach that the Holy Spirit will be removed from the earth. That is incorrect doctrine. Because there is a great harvest that has to take place after every one of us are gone. When we've been raptured, there's going to be those that are left that still need to be saved. And those are the tribulation saints that shall go through the great tribulation because they didn't receive Christ Jesus now and today. Amen. Today is the day of salvation, Amen. not tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all enjoying this so far? Yes. Amen. Amen. It's going to get better. Amen. Verse 17. He says, he is the Holy Spirit. Who leads into all what? Truth. Truth. The world cannot receive him, saints. Because it isn't looking for him. I love the word him. That word H in your New Living Translation should be capitalized. Doesn't mean that the New Living Translation did the word injustice, but you have to understand that the capitalization of him is referring to a divine person. And the King James got it right because if you read in the King James, him is capitalized referring to a divine being. Amen? Amen. A little side teaching for you. Amen. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him. And it doesn't recognize him. But you know him, talking to the saints, because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Woo! Amen. Come on, saints. Amen. Amen. 
That is a wonderful truth that Christ just gave to his disciples. Jesus Christ just told his disciples that the Holy Spirit up until this point has dwelled with you. But he has not been able to set up his home in you. Because I have not gone, he's telling them, I have not gone to the cross and paid for your sins. So I am not able to send him to you just yet. But when I go to the cross and I pay for your sins, and when the veil of the temple is rent from top to bottom and the way into heaven has been paid for, I shall send the Spirit of God into your hearts. Amen. And He shall regenerate you with the born-again experience. Oh, yeah. He's saying, don't worry, my children. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. He says the world is not looking for the Holy Ghost. The church is not looking for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Are you hearing me by the Holy Ghost? That's true. And why is that? Go with me to 1 Corinthians. I want you to hold your place there and go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Are we there? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. One of my favorite scriptures in Corinthians. And this is going to help clarify some things for you disciples out there and for you evangelists out there trying to get Jesus Christ into people. This is the way you come at it, okay? Let's read. It says, but people who aren't spiritual, everybody say spiritual. Spiritual. But people who aren't spiritual, what that means is who don't have the Spirit, who don't have the Holy Spirit, can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it, for only those who are spiritual, who have the Holy Spirit, can understand what the Holy Spirit means. Well, Pastor, what does all that mean? What, I don't understand. That means that you cannot understand anything in the Word of God outside of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. You cannot try to obey anything in this Word outside of the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Ghost to help you to fulfill what God has called you to do Amen. in the earth. Amen. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, you will live a life of sin. Amen. Amen. You will give over to the appetites and animal passions of your flesh. Amen. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost helps you, Saint. But we have to know that He's available to help us. we got to know that he is our great advocate. He's here to comfort. He's here to counsel. He's here to encourage us. He's here to strengthen us. He's here to do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Amen. Amen? We need the Holy Ghost. And more than any, than any of that, we need him in the church. For it's the anointing, the Holy Ghost, that destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul told the church in Corinth, he says, I don't come with high sounding ideas. I don't come with men's wisdom. I don't come with the philosophy of men or psychology or any of that nonsense. Amen. I don't come to try to persuade you, saints, with men's wisdom. He says, I come to you in the demonstration of the spirit and power so that your trust and your faith will be in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on now. Yeah? We need the anointing. Amen. Go back with me to John. Jesus has got something to say before 20 days after this, he's going to be crucified. His crucifixion is already on its way. And he's preparing the disciples. Verse 18. Oh, well, you know what? Let's back up a little bit. I want you to see that part where it says, but you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. I want to camp out just for a second there because I want you to understand how the Holy Spirit moved in the Old Testament versus how he moves in the New Testament. 
He's the same Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Amen? Amen. So the Holy Spirit of old moved upon men of old. He would come upon them for certain tasks to be carried out for God's glory, for God's kingdom. But then he had to leave. He could not dwell with men because of sin. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now that Jesus has paid the price and the penalty for our sin, he can dwell in the man or woman of God forever. Well, pastor, does that mean I can just act however I want? And that the Spirit of God will not leave? Well, I'm saved. I can do what I want. I got salvation and I received Jesus Christ in 1985. And I got saved on that day and I did nothing after that. There's going to be some marks and there's going to be some identity that you belong to Christ because of the move of the Spirit of God in you that's exhibiting certain characteristics of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is the demonstration of the fruit of the Spirit of God in your life that's manifesting through the man or woman of God because you have decided to stay attached to Christ Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is going to work on your life. Amen. That is the dwelling presence. But Christians have this concept or have this interpretation or some kind of theology that as long as I say that I'm saved, it doesn't matter how I act or what I do or what I believe in, I'm going to make it into heaven. That is false doctrine, saints. Amen. Everything I read in the Bible says you must abide in me and then I shall abide in you. Amen. From apart from me, you can do nothing. Amen. But you can do what? All things through Christ Jesus. I can do all things as long as I what? In Christ Jesus. And that alone gives freedom for the Holy Ghost to work in your lives to do what's needed to be done. That wasn't the covenant we had in the Old Testament because sin had been not been paid for. The blood of bulls and animals was not good enough to wash away our sins. Amen. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away the sins of man. Amen. And then alone, the Holy Ghost comes in, fills you, resides in you, and will not leave you, and will not forsake you. He will not give up as long as you don't give up. Come on, Amen. saints. Amen. He says, if you will, I will. I will. The only time you get into trouble, saints, is if you step outside of the flow of the Spirit of God. Yeah. If you stay in the flow, everything will go okay with you. Am I making sense or am yes, I just talking? No, amen. Is, getting, is, it, is this hitting Yes, me? amen. Hallelujah. So you understand, yo, the Spirit would come upon them but could not dwell. Because if he was able to dwell, that means they would have been transformed and regenerated. That means they would have been born again. Only the Holy Spirit can regenerate a man or woman of God. And that comes through the precious Holy Ghost. How does all that happen? Let me bring it down into everyday language. I'm trying to minister to somebody that's completely lost. And that person comes to me and they start asking me in the coffee house, they start asking me sitting down, what's all this money business going on in the church? Why do you have to give money? Because that's, that's a big issue. Why do you have to give money to the church? Me being uh, seasoned in the word of God, discerning in the spirit, knowing this person has no idea what salvation is, I'm not going to entertain that thought because those who have the Holy Spirit will understand what the Spirit is saying. Amen. If you are all here and are filled with the Spirit of God, you understand the covenant you have concerning tithes and offerings Amen. because you have the Holy Ghost. And Amen. it says in my Bible that the Spirit will lead you into what? All truth. And that truth will hit your spirit and the Holy Ghost will relay it to your spirit saying, this is true. Amen. You need to receive it. Amen. But the person outside of having salvation that's unregenerated, he hasn't been regenerated by the spirit. His spirit man is still dead in sin and trespasses. He has not had the born again experience. Amen. And as I'm sitting there talking with this individual, he's asking me about money. The very question I ask him is, are you saved? Do you have salvation? Amen. 
Well, most of the time they say yes. I have to, I, yeah, I know Jesus. I know Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus Christ? Okay, have you received the gift of the Holy Spirit? I, I, I've never heard of this Holy Spirit. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. And that leads me into a discussion on where to share with him concerning his lack of faith and understanding so that he can be saved. Let me put it this way. The Holy Ghost will help you when you're here in this service. The Holy Spirit helps you. He gives you a measure of faith to believe. Amen. Even before you're saved, He gives you a measure of faith, and that is by God and God alone. Amen. And it's up to us because we still have a free will to respond when our faith is being moved to the salvation call of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Ghost is the one that baptizes us into the body of Christ. Amen. He is the one that saves us only through the preaching and teaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will not move outside of anything else concerning exaltation of Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen. As long as you are lifting up Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and the foundation to everything you do, the Holy Ghost will be involved. Amen. When you start putting your faith into something else, because you can have Jesus Christ, and I have Buddha, I have a little Muslim in there, I have this little saint, that little saint, I have all the candles surrounding me, I go and light this, you've already kicked the Holy Ghost out. He's gone. He will not operate in that sphere. He will not even touch the saint that has added this one and this one. No other thing can you add. No other foundation can you lay than the one that's already been laid, and that foundation is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. You have to understand, Satan, the Holy Ghost will not speak of his own self. Never. The Holy Spirit will always point you and the seeker to what Jesus Christ has done. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. He never speaks of his own accord. What does that mean? Uh, Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. And you hear that in Pentecostal circles. You hear that in charismatic churches, full gospel churches. The Baptists, they got it right because their doctrine is straight. Most of the time. They know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Most of the time. That's for another teaching. But what I'm saying is, is that the Holy Ghost, when he begins to minister, the Holy Spirit, when he begins to move, the Holy Spirit, when he begins to convict, when the Holy Spirit begins to encourage, it's up to the church to respond in a manner that's worthy that if he be lifted up, but, uh, Pastor, I don't understand. Can I pray to the Holy Spirit? Can I pray to the Holy Ghost? No. It's gonna, I'm going to shock some of your doctrine. Amen. Amen. Jesus laid down the precious model prayer for the church. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. hallowed be thy name. Yeah. He didn't say, Jesus said, there's a time coming. You've asked for me while I've been on the earth. You've asked everything through me, but there's a time coming. You won't have, you won't have to come to me. You're going to go directly to the Father Amen. using my name. Amen. Woo! Amen. That means we have, we have direct access to our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. That means we don't pray to Jesus, but we praise Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on. We don't worship. We don't, we don't pray, but we praise and we worship Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes. Well, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus. In the name of of my attorney that rests in the heavenly courts. Amen. God, I don't come in my name because my name is nothing. Amen. Amen. My righteousness in the eyes of God is dirty rags. Amen. I come in the righteousness of the one who is righteous because I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Amen. I come in the name Amen. of your son, Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. I cannot come in my own merit. I cannot come with what my good works did last week. I saved that person last week. I ministered to the homeless person last week. No, 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 no. I don't care about any of that. I come in the name of what your son has done upon Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. Amen. God's ear does this. What did you say? Oh, okay. Oh, he's coming the right way. I come in the name of the one Saint Christopher, Saint Nicholas, you know, the one that can get me money. I put that saint there next to my money because I light a candle because it's going to attract money to my... This, this isn't Christianity. This is not the world. 
This is the church where they've had everything else. And what it's called is called the God of entertainment. Amen. Oh my gosh, see? It's true. That's why the Holy Ghost is no longer in the churches. That's true. We're That's talking right. about the Holy Spirit, the great advocate. He's here to help us in the earth. He is the one that destroys the yokes. Amen. He is the one that helps us live a holy life before God. Hallelujah. He is the one that convicts us when we miss it. Amen. He's the one that encourages us when we want to give up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He is our teacher. Amen. He is our counselor. Hallelujah. He's the one that counsels us in everything that we need in this earth. Amen. We have to understand the role and the purpose and the office of the third member of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. The other day we were, we were watching TV, me and Lisa, Pastor Lisa. And we were just kind of rushing through the news because we've kind of taken a break from all the politics and news. Like I told you a few weeks back, there's like a decompress in the body of Christ right now. Yeah. You don't hear a lot of that right now because there's really nothing else we can do but pray. Amen. We've already done what we we're supposed to do. Our civil duty was to go vote. And that's what the Christian does. So that, that's how our, our voice is heard. It's not to go out there and put, put up a a, a giant billboard that, you know, homosexuals are going to hell or all this other stuff. That's garbage. That's not Christianity. And it irks my spirit when I see those signs that say you're going to hell if you continue. This. That stuff's for the church. Amen. That's not for the lost. Amen. For God so loved the world. Amen. <laughs> they don't know. Most of that is written for the church. Amen. That was written for Corinth. You continue in these practices. Hey, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're watching the news, and as we pass by, I says, "Oh, hold on, sweetie, back, back it up," because I, I didn't, I didn't think I saw what I saw, but I did see what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't almost realize it because I, there's no way that's going on. That, that could not have happened. So we rewind it, and the newscast comes on and says, "Yeah, at this particular church, it doesn't matter where, which one it was. If you want to go find out, go on the on, on Google and look." But I'm not going to tell you here. You have to go search it out for yourself. And it's just one of those things God will reveal every once in a while. Just so we can see where the church is. And this is a big church. Mega church. Not here in Houston. But a, a, just a big church. Thousands of people in there. And we're looking for where the pastor is. We're trying to see where the pastor is. There's nobody up at the pulpit. And I'm like, what's going on here, Lord? Well, he comes out of the sky. The pastor. And he's on this... Looks like cables, and he's like this. Jesus Christ came to save that which was lost out of the ceiling. I said, You gotta be kidding me, Lord. I said, Maybe if I come in here on a horse or something, the great white horse, maybe we'll get some stirring here in the church of the living God. Amen. Boy, I was I was just praying, Lord, I hope that thing doesn't break, Lord. The Bible says, do not tempt the Lord thy God, right? That surely is tempting the Lord thy God, testing the Lord thy God. I mean, it looked like a circus. I'm sorry, it did look like a circus. Oh, my goodness. So he comes down, and he's still preaching, and they have to lower him. And get this, it's like if they lowered him here, y'all are the church. They lowered him like this, and he's ha halfway down. He goes, uh, you guys need to turn me around. <laughs> so he's just stuck there like this. And so it looked like they had a little bit of a mechanical problem. So it, it took a few seconds, and it went zzzz. I mean, where is the anointing? I didn't feel, surely feel the anointing, because I was doing what y'all were doing, laughing. It's comical to us, because we have the Holy Ghost here. We reverence the Holy Ghost here. Amen. We reverence the move of God's Spirit. Amen. Amen. I could go on and on about those things that are in the church in these last days. Amen. Why do men operate in that fashion? Why do they substitute the program and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because there's no move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's no anointing of God. So when there's nothing happening in the church, because surely there's something going on here at the hand of God amen. ministry. Can I get an amen? amen? I can go to each and yes. every one of you that have been with us yes. for any length of time and see the transforming power yes. of the Holy Ghost amen. on your life. Amen. That is a result of you staying attached to the yes. mind. Yes. Well, I don't care what it feels like, what it looks like, 
what I've heard, what I've gone through, I got to get to the house of the living God. I got to get to where God is right now. And if I abide in Him, His work will continue in my life through the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You hear me, Amen. We short circuit the, the move of the Holy Spirit when we start substituting other things and programs and entertainment to come into the church. The Holy Spirit says, I'm not touching that. I'm not in that. I cannot bless that. And there's no yoke, yoke destroying power that the church needs. We need the Holy Ghost saints. I say it again. We need the Holy Ghost saints. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get an amen? We need the presence of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Holy Ghost, come. Come and move in this place. Come on, man. Don't be so technical where you can't exalt or acknowledge the Holy Spirit. I'm saying that when you pray, you start getting into a serious place with God. You got to know that you can go directly to the Father. Amen. Amen. I'll give you one more story. We're watching this movie. It's not important what movie, but the lady was in the church. And the lady was in the church praying. She was saying, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help my family. For you know my family's a mess. Please help my family. Jesus, help my family. And as she got up, it was a Catholic church. And the priest came behind her and said, I've seen you here quite a bit. But yet have not seen you in confession. <laughs> right away I was like, oh my gosh, it just irks my spirit when I hear that. Oh. We don't have to confess our sins to a man. Amen. The only time the Bible says confess your sins to one another is when you've offended each other. Amen. If I've offended my brother, I, I need to go and confess my sin and make that right and reconcile with my brother if it's in all possible my authority or in my control to do so. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. So I need to make things right. That was concerning the church. And if there's to be a healthy church family, if I've sinned against you with thought, my, you know, not my thought, but if I've come out and said something to offend you, make it right. Go and confess and say, hey, I messed up. I'm sorry. Uh, hold an account for each other's faults. Make an allowance for each other's faults. Multi love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Amen. Yes. Besides that, the priest told her, and she said, well, it's been a long time since I've had confession, Father. She called, they call him Father. Father. We only have one Father. Amen. So a Catholic church is a mess. You don't confess your sins to God. There's no, there's no cleansing power there. That's right. Only the blood of Jesus can cleanse you. That man can do nothing. Amen. It only eases Amen. the mind, the conscious mind, for a day or two. Okay? Amen. There's no power to remove the guilt from men or women in that little booth. All you're doing is sharing all of your business with another person. <laughs> Which some, man sometimes is not strong enough to handle some of those confessions you have. You need to go your father with that stuff. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so they were done. She confessed. A week later, she comes to the church. And she's all excited because she's, you know, released her burden. <laughs> so she's excited now. She's going to a church drive and she's coming in ready to serve. I'm ready to serve now. I'm ready to do something for God. <laughs> but no transforming power. It's just confession. It's for the moment. It's only to release a little bit of guilt, whatever's going on in the conscious mind. She goes in there, and she taps on the shoulder of the father. And the father turns around, and he goes, yeah. Looks like you saw a ghost. <laughs> Get out of here, Satan. All right, and she's like, what did I do? He goes, I could not sleep for a week after your confession. <laughs> I looked at my wife, this is why you don't confess to man your sins. <laughs> Jesus knew this. This is the role of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will never convict you that when you've missed it in your personal walk with God, He's not going to convict you to go to man in a little booth and confess all your business to a man. Amen? Amen? Now, if you... I'm not going to go into the Old Testament of where they got. That's traditions of men. What that does, it puts control and power within the church. Because now you're relying on the, you're relying on the church to, uh, what is it, evolve? Or, uh, evolve, evolve? Absolve. 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 There you go. Absolve. 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 This is my uh, grammar teacher, by the way. She is. If I say any word wrong, she corrects me. And I invite that correction. Husbands, you invite some correction sometimes from your wives. 
That's how I speak so eloquently up here. <laughs> and so well, and, and I'm well spoken up here. And just Amen. come like this. Amen. None of y'all come like this. Amen. That's the work of the Holy Ghost Amen. through my wife. Amen. Amen. Come on, saints. We're almost there. Go back. That was all about the indwelling of God's spirit and how he transforms the lost person through what you have to understand. The transforming power comes through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the one that regenerates the lost man. You were lost. Every one of us was lost before we came to Christ. Amen. And now you've been what? Regenerated. Regeneration means you're going from that old man to a new man old things have passed away behold all things become new there is a new hate against sin there is a new love you have for God you now have the divine nature of God himself dwelling in you that's powerful saints you will never that day you gave your life to Christ God messed you up Amen. Are you hearing me by the Holy Ghost? You will never, ever, you can't, but you will be a miserable Christian trying to put your foot back in the cesspool called the world. That's true. Don't put your toe over there. Don't even try to touch the water and see how it's doing. Just stay looking to the Lord Jesus Christ as your author and finisher of your faith. Amen. Verse 18. Jesus says, No. Everybody say no. 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 I will not abandon you as orphans. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I love that scripture. I will come to you soon. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. Amen. He's saying because you don't see me as of right now. <clears throat> He's saying in a little while you won't see me any longer because I'm going to the cross. I'm going to be crucified. He says, but I'm going to encourage you. I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, that which I promised. Amen. And as he comes, you're going to experience because I am raised to life. I am going to experience the resurrection. You too can have a foretaste of that resurrection also. Amen. Romans chapter 6, Saint. We're crucified in Christ Jesus. Amen. When he died, in the mind of God, we died also to our sinful nature. Amen. This all done by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Y'all got to hear me on this. Yes. Thing. It's very powerful for you to have victory over sin. You have to understand your position in God now that you've been saved and regenerated and born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. When you died, you understood the crucifixion, and that Jesus Christ died on that cross. That means you died to your sinful nature, though it's still active. It has no power or dominion over you, saint. Amen. Woo! Amen. You treat it like a dead man. Yes. Here I'm dead man walking. Amen. I'm a dead man walking. Amen. That part of me is no longer alive. Amen. Okay? And also, I was buried with him. Three parts. Buried in that tomb. My old life was buried in that tomb with Christ. That's why some of you are trying to make it fit. You can't put your new life back into the tomb. You can, but it doesn't fit quite well. I'm going back to the tomb to get my grave clothes. And I'm putting my grave clothes back on, and I'm going back out to the club. I'm going to go ahead and start clicking on that, which I shouldn't be clicking. I'm going to start drinking that, which I know I shouldn't be drinking. I'm going to start smoking that, which I know I shouldn't be smoking. Amen. I'm going to start taking that, which I know I shouldn't be taking. And when I do it, it doesn't agree with me. Amen. That's Amen. true. Amen. Amen. You can know real fast if you've been born again, because if that yes. stuff's still okay with you, you better get back to the cross. Yes. Amen. 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 As I told you earlier, saints, the Spirit of God will come and He will dwell with you forever. Amen. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But can the Holy Spirit be removed from the saint? That's a scary thought. you got to really be in a place where you have just kicked the Holy Ghost completely out of your life. That's why it's important to plant yourself in a church where the Word's still going over you, and the Holy Ghost is still moving, and the Holy Spirit is still convicting. Amen. Because when you're here, not everything I say is going to be comfortable or line up with your lifestyle. Right. 
But the Holy Spirit will help you to serve that which God has called you to serve. Amen. <clears throat> yes, amen. Verse 20. When I'm raised to life again, there he goes, when I've been resurrected, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Hallelujah. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Yes. Now, I want, to, I want to finish over here in John 16. And I want to close up here with this scripture here. Because it's very, it's, it's, it's very well needed. I could probably go to two or three parts in this message so that you can really get the work of the Holy Spirit. Which is pneumatology. Is it pneumatology? The study of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Pneumatology, the study of the Holy Spirit. Verse 12 says in John 16, I want you to see this. It says, there is so much more, disciples. I want to tell you, but you can't bear it right now. Oh, that's so good. Saints, you can only give so much to a lost person that you need to back up. Amen. <laughs> Why? Their flesh cannot bear it. Their unregenerated mind cannot bear it. And Jesus is saying here, even to his disciples that were given a measure of his spirit to go out and cast devils out, to raise the dead, to preach the acceptable year that the kingdom of God is now at hand. They too could not understand the full revelation of Christ of what he wanted to give them at this moment. He's trying to say, I can't tell you everything because right now you don't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to help you to understand all these things. Amen. Because your mind is going to consider it foolishness. Amen. And that's why the world is not looking for the Holy Ghost. Amen. They're not looking for the things from God right now. Because it all sounds foolishness to the minds of men. But here Jesus is saying, you cannot bear it right now. Why? Because they don't have a born again spirit to be able to handle all these things. I want to tell you, my disciples, Jesus, my disciples, that there's no longer going to be a Sabbath. Oh, that would have blown their mind. Do you notice he doesn't say any of that? Mm, you got to really read the gospel. It's powerful. You know, there's not going to be any more festivals. They put a lot of stock in those things. You know what? You're not going to have to bring any blood animals anymore to sacrifice. He didn't discuss any of that with them. You're not going to have to do any of the mosaic ceremonial law which you're accustomed to. He didn't get to share any of that with them because they would not have fully understood all of those things. Their flesh would not have been able to handle it. Amen? Amen. We're almost there, saints. When the Spirit... The Holy Spirit of truth comes. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. That means he will not point to himself. He will not point to the minister. He will not exalt the church over Christ. He will not exalt the man of God. But will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory. Jesus, the Holy Ghost's job is to bring glory to Christ by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever He receives from me. Close your Bibles. The great advocate who is the Holy Ghost. He is called to walk alongside us. He is our helper. He is our comforter. He is our intercessor. He is our encourager and He is our counselor. Do you need the great advocate today? Yes. Amen. I'll say it again. Do you yes. need the great advocate yes. today? Yes, we do. Some of y'all need some encouragement. Yes. Amen. You've had a hectic week. Yes. Some of y'all need the comforter. Amen. Yes. I just need to be comforted. And what I'm going through, that comfort represents healing. The Holy Spirit will bring that healing to you. He'll bring the comfort you need to help you get through a certain situation. A certain trial. 
I need the counselor. I don't know what direction I need to go in. I need the help of the counselor. I need the great teacher who is the Holy Spirit to help me here in the earth. It's not going to just fall right out of the sky like it did in the Old Testament, saints. Amen. Christ has paid and done everything. And the men of old have paid with their blood to bring this to us so that we can have this wisdom before us. Amen. And so all the counseling you need is found in the written word of God. And the Holy Spirit will help you to understand the written word of God when you start to read the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's stand.